Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja Devi and in this segment today we are going to discuss about statehood for Jammu and Kashmir. This is a question. This topic is important from the perspective of films and also from the perspective of GS Mains papers. So let's begin with the first topic. Why is it in the news? Now, the last time a prime minister meeting on Jammu and Kashmir created such a buzz was on January 23, 2004. when the then prime minister atal bihari bajpayee who led the nda government had met kashmiri separatist leaders a day after the then deputy pm lk adwani had hosted them for talks in delhi now the main difference in the current times is the mainstream leaders have been pushed to the fringe their meeting with the prime minister is seen as a milestone and statehood has become a high hanging political fruit let's look at the highlights of the meeting now in this meeting none of the political leaders took maximalist position at the meeting that means there were no grounds for achieving the maximum agenda but seeing common grounds for at least achieving the minimum agenda there was no cross talk no flare many said the prime minister was all ears that means he was listening and accommodative to everything and heard them out omar abdullah did raise a red flag on the delimitation exercise that is being conducted in jammu and kashmir right now why should jammu and kashmir be singled out for the exercise when it is supposed to be nationwide Also, the party's position to authorize Farooq Abdullah to take a decision at an appropriate time stamp. He said, "It is expected that the commission will reach out to all the parties soon and ascertain their views." People's Conference leader Sajid Lone said he left the meeting with a sense of optimism. And moving on to our background, if we talk about the background of it, we will refer to the Kashmir Re- Jammu and Kashmir Reorganisation Act of 2019. First of all we need to understand what did it do it bifurcated the state of Jammu and Kashmir into two regions namely the union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh so Jammu and Kashmir after article 370 was revoked there was no dual citizenship central laws can also directly apply no separate laws for Jammu and Kashmir indian citizens from other states can buy land and property no two flags elections every 5 years to be conducted center can declare financial emergency under article 360 and police can be managed by the center if we talk about the background then we will also refer to the new order after that so article 370 under article 370 jammu and kashmir had its own constitution and the laws passed by parliament were applicable to the state only with the state government's concurrence the president was empowered to decide which provisions of the indian constitution would be applicable with the state's assent now we will also talk about article 35a which protected the laws such as bar on outsiders buying property in the state and women marrying non kashmiris losing their property rights these special measures could only be altered on the recommendation of the sadar e riyasat that is on the advice of the minister's council or by the constituent assembly president ramnath govind he declared that all provisions of the indian constitution shall now apply to the state moving on let's talk about the challenges related to article 370 revoking the mechanism that the government used to railroad its rigid ideological position on jammu and kashmir through the rajya sabha was both hasty and stealthy that was one of the criticisms and that was also be seen as a threat to democracy the passing of legislation as far reaching is dismembering a state without prior consultations consultation is a due process that needs to be followed in any democracy especially with respect to article 370 that was another challenge or critique the entire exercise of getting article 370 out of the constitution effectively abrogated has been marked by executive excess a purported process to change the constitution status of a sensitive border state has been achieved without any legislative input legislative input is utmost necessary with respect to such special states okay and now if we talk, talk about the challenges on the road ahead the first challenge is to overcome the views on the state of for jammu and kashmir first we should think that the state of the union territory of jammu and kashmir should get its statehood back first it will of course review the entire achievements or failures since 2019 after the reorganization of jammu and kashmir what were the pros what were the cons everything with respect to social fabric with respect to economic fabric that is a challenge to overcome right now right now delimitation commission is having its order there after that only something can be achieved moving on if we talk about a way forward first let's 
just talk about a conclusion not a way forward i have already discussed the way forward that economic fabric social fabric everything will be taken into account and consideration if jammu and kashmir needs to become a state again so first what we need to think right now is that the coming back from the cold although it has melted the cold has melted what happens next whether today's that means yesterday's meeting is a photo op or the start of a process it will be known in the way by how the center actually picks up the different views together some leaders have suggested that perhaps a more structured process will help build on what was achieved how they participate in the delimitation process how they move ahead with their own agendas how they move ahead with their own viewpoints and take them into account to become a bunch for the best of the people of kashmir that is going to be seen so let's move on to the question critically analyze the political structure of india with respect to jammu kashmir reorganization act of 2019 so that's it for today tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment until then stay updated and thank you so much for watching